Oh, God, that's bad. Hey, what's up, folks? Welcome back. So, look. We've been talking CMOS a lot recently, and what I want to do is put some of the CMOS to the test. I want to do a nice scientific experiment to see which CMOS actually reigns supreme among CMOS, if any. Um, I know getting the feeling, because everyone talks about, you know, this CMOS makes you feel better and everything. That's kind of an individual thing. Uh, taste also as well, but I want to see if like consistency-wise and just, I guess flavor-wise, I don't know. But consistency-wise is the biggest one for me. Well, not they all, come out the same because what I don't want is you spending money on a CMOS gel from a company and they're tricking you with the fake Lugazi fake CMOS because if that's the case then you're getting conned and I don't want you to get conned. So what I did was I ordered a bunch of CMOS from a bunch of different companies from different me regions, I said regions, different regions and different species so that you can see or I can see whether or not there's a consistency difference and then you can tell the same thing. But I'm also going to have my wife taste test each one of these to see if anyone tastes better than the previous one. So let's jump right into it and I can break down all these CMOS that I have because I have some of the fake stuff here, some of the Iris Condors Cripsis, some stuff from Grenada, some stuff from Tanzania, some stuff from Jamaica. So I got a bunch of CMOS here, just a, a lot of this stuff and I want to make sure we do this thoroughly and properly. So, with that being said, let's go and get started. If you haven't done so already, if you haven't done so already, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video because I like making these videos and I appreciate you guys watching. So let's go and get started, shall we? Let's do it. Okay, so one of the first things we're gonna do here is we're gonna put water inside of here. This is what we're gonna use to wash out each one of the sea balls, like clean it off, get any dirt and salt and stuff off. What I'm gonna do is I'm take this GoPro here, it's gonna be inside the water so you all can get a nice in-depth shot to see what it looks like as it's actually being cleaned and whatnot. Okay, so that's a gallon of water we just put in right there. Now I'm gonna take my fancy little scale and we're gonna make sure each and every one of these is the exact same weight. So what we're actually gonna do is we're just gonna do half an ounce for each one. Okay, this is exactly half an ounce, 0.5 an ounce. We're gonna drop it in the water. Ooh. So now we're just gonna clean it off, separate it, and just see how the moss looks up close. This process here is just to make sure you get all the sand, any salt, any dirt, seashells, animals, anything that's attached to it, off. This is a really important process because you wanna make sure that you're not consuming, you know, stuff you shouldn't consume. This is the Jamaican wild harvested sea moss. So this is 100% from the ocean, from the rocks. And this sea moss looks awesome actually. It's super stringy. I've never seen sea moss like this. This is definitely cool looking. Okay, so I'm quite content with how clean this sea moss is. So what we're going to do is transfer it over to this container and I'm gonna put in maybe three or four copper cups full of water. I'm also going to add one fourth of a lime to this. And we're going to do this across the board for each and every one of these CMOS. So they all have the exact same ingredients, essentially. Okay, it seems like we only need two cups for this, and that's what we're gonna go with. So it's just lime, sea moss, and water. That's one, and I'm gonna fast forward through this process, but we're gonna do the other ones the exact same way. Okay, so we're all set. We have all the mosses here, all seven, eight, six, seven, eight of these things set and good to go. Each one's half an ounce. Now what we're gonna do come morning time, we're gonna let it sit for like two to six hours, but right now it's like eight o'clock and I feel like going to the house to go to sleep. Well, not sleep, I wanna watch, whatever. You guys don't care. But one of the providers said here, each bag is proportioned to one ounce, it was this one here, and it yields 32 ounces of sea moss gel. Do not exceed in your blender 32 ounces of water per one ounce. So what we're gonna do is each one of these is gonna be 16 ounces of water come the AM. I have some more water and we're gonna do this and blend them up to make the gel and that should create, according to this, the perfect gel every time. 
So, with that being said, I'll see you all tomorrow. Uh, technically, this is a video, so I'm gonna just cut it, but just imagine I did something awesome, I, I, I created something amazing, and then came back and picked back up. That's, that's what I want you to think. Imagine that, okay? All right, perfect. See ya. 24 hours later. So what I want to do now is show you all the difference between the moss when it's dry and when it's been rehydrated. You're only supposed to let it sit for maybe three to like six hours, two to six hours, something of that nature. But I let this sit for pretty much 24 hours because I'm lazy. So this is where we're at now. This is going to be the purple sea moss that comes from Tanzania, East Africa. As you can see here, the label was just kind of slapped on there. I don't know who did this, but they need a they need, they need a course in like labeling because I think they put it on after the package was filled and they slant, they slapped the label on. And obviously, it didn't work out too well. So they should have redone it, but who cares? It's all about the insides, the guts of this. What I will say about this moss though, um, I look at this, come right off. What I will say about this moss though is it's not as dry as one would hope the moss would be. Like it's still a little bit spongy. So what they say is when it's spongy like this, it's not fully like dehydrated. Cause what you want is your moss to be fully dehydrated so that you get more bang for your buck essentially. Cause if there's water inside of it, that weighs it down big time. So this is what it looks like when it's dry here. Like I said, it is kind of spongy, um, but that could just be the purple sea moss. I'll compare it to our purple moss as well. And also the Grenadian purple to get a good reference point. But then here we're gonna pull out, from here we're gonna pull out the, the moist moss. There's one little piece here. Oh wow, this thing's long. Giggity. All right, so this is one fat piece here. Now, what they say is, is like the reason why it looks like this, um, there's like one central vein, is because they do tie it, tie pieces of moss onto like a rope. So once it's tied on the rope, then at that point, it just grows. So that's what makes this uh, wild crafted and not wild harvested, because there was a human interaction that helped make this moss into what it is today. Um, as you see here, it's, it's pretty thick in comparison to its dry version, so it did rehydrate very well. But one of the key things to note whenever you're looking for moss is to see how thick it gets because if it's thick like this after rehydration, I'll let you know whether or not it's farm raised or if it was um, or farmed or grown with man-made interactions or if it's actually 100% like wild harvested from the rocks type of deal. So this is the African one again and this is what it looks like. So we're gonna go through all these and what I'm gonna do next is put it into the blender. Okay, so we have the scale here and then what we're gonna do is it's on ounces right now, so we put this here and then zero it out again. So we'll see. This now comes up to fully hydrated four ounces. So this comes with the four ounces here. So according to the note we got here from one of the CMOS providers, it said each bag is proportioned into one ounce. This yields 32 ounces of CMOS gel. Do not exceed in your blender 32 ounces of water per one ounce. So my theory, because this is half an ounce right here, so correction, this was half an ounce of dried moss and it comes up to four ounces fully hydrated. But I still wanna do the experiment the exact same way. So I'm still gonna put in just 16 ounces of water. And what we're gonna do is fill up the line. So this blender here has a line up to 16 ounces. So we're gonna go just up to the 16 ounces using the water that we did it in, we let it soak in. Okay, so it's been successfully blended. One thing I would recommend when you're using, like when you're making gel, is not use a ninja blender. The horizontal blades kind of make it a bit difficult to make the gel perfectly. I forgot that and now nah, I gotta, it takes, it takes longer. But this is what you get right here. So we're gonna do, we're gonna turn this on, zero it out, and we're gonna see just how much gel this yielded. We're getting with 16 ounces of water with the four ounces of sea moss. And we ended up with 14.9 fluid ounces. Now, of course, it wasn't exactly 16 ounces because it did take up, the moss itself took up some space in here, but this is what we got. So we got 15 ounces of sea moss gel. So we'll let this solidify. 
coagulate, coagulate, whatever the word is, and then we're gonna test these things out. Now he's gotta do all the other ones the exact same way. But I'm not gonna put you all through that. We're gonna hurry through this, and then you're gonna have the final product. This right here is our CMOS. This is our Etchmacon's knee uh, CMOS, which is 100% wild crafted. So it does have man-made intervention. This is our moss when it's been hydrated for 24 hours. This is what it looks like. Kind of like a pair of lungs, like lung veins. Uh, this is the full spectrum here. So it has like some purple, some green, some gold that's transitioning to red as well. And this is what it looks like when it's dry. So completely dry, it's very hard, very brittle. Um, just dry it out all together. But yeah, so that's the Netter Gold one. This is ours, this is what we sell. And yeah, okay, next one. Okay, so the next one here, we have the Grenadian Gold. It's very interesting for two reasons. The first reason is, as you can see, it's like super tight and just, it's, it's, if you eat mushrooms, this reminds me of like a lion's mane mushroom when I took it out. That's how it looks, right? It's really tight. Each one of the vein pieces is like super dense. It just looks like hair. I like it. I think that's cool. Um, but this is what it looks like in comparison, the dry version. So the dry version looks super dry, brittle, just like you want it to be. And then once it's hydrated, it looks like this. But the second reason is interesting because the person I purchased this from really hates like man intervention sea moss. And they have pictures on the Instagram page of how like farmers, people in the sea and stuff, putting it on the ropes and they're like, this is trash, this is trash. But this sea moss is 100% exactly raised just like that. Um, so I don't know if they know this or not. They are from Grenada and yeah, but I don't know if they know this or not, but their sea moss is 100% uh, ocean crafted, not ocean harvested as they state. So, yeah. So again, if you hydrate your moss and it looks like this one big thick vein, and they say that it's 100% ocean harvested, they lie to you, and you should probably ask for your money back. I'm not saying it's not good moss, but just let you know they lie to you. But one note about them lying to you and like misinformation, a lot of times they don't know. They're just going off what they are told from whatever provider they have and they're just like middlemen like just straight middlemen and yeah so just just know that because a lot of CMOS providers will say that CMOS has 92 minerals in it and all this other stuff and they have no clue what the 92 minerals are so just be careful people that are peddling information without any way of backing it up like a quick google search you can find like the minerals but they don't even they, uh, it's just uh, all right, so this one here is the fake, fake sea moss. This is the farm raised, which means it was like raised in artificial conditions, sometimes a swimming pool or stuff of that nature. And this one, as you can see, is like super, um, it's, it's very like squishy, it's super squishy, very salty. Um, the salt all on it. Usually what they do is they use like table salt or some type of sea salt, but usually just table salt and they'll put it on to give it that salty consistency, essentially. Um, it's not dried out, it's very like, big already. And as you can see here, this is the, oof, this is from overnight. This is the half an ounce right here. And this is how big it came out to be. Um, this thing is huge. Like this is gigantic in comparison to its already puffy self. Cause like just looking at this one compared to any other ones, size wise, like this was already fully hydrated. Well, not fully hydrated, but also pretty hydrated, not dried out. And this is the stuff that um, I got from the international food market. And this is what it looks like when it's fully hydrated, super fat, super thick. And this was just half an ounce that swelled up. And see, the big thing I wanna make sure is that some of you all may be buying CMOS gel that's made of this stuff and you don't even know it because the person that's selling it to you doesn't know or doesn't care because when you buy CMOS gel you don't really know the condition of the CMOS you don't know like what kind of CMOS it is you have to go off their word and a lot of people's words aren't worth anything okay so this one here is going to be the Jamaican wild crafted CMOS that I picked up on Amazon and in comparison to its dry version it is relatively dry uh, nice and brittleness to it, so I can give it that. Um, the rehydrated version, though, is super thick, as you can see here. 
So I'm kind of questioning whether or not this may be a little farmed, but honestly, it's, it's not too bad, especially since we just saw what it looks like when you have the fake, fake sea moss. That thing's super thick, but this one's also kind of thick. Uh, so, like I said, this is dry, but it may not be, it may have just been a drier version of the fake stuff, but I can't say for sure. So quite surprisingly to me, this one had the biggest color shift. This one here is the Grenadian purple sea moss. Now it is covered in a lot of sand or salt. It tastes like salty sand, sandy salt. Can't really say for sure, but it's covered in a lot of that. Um, and it's supposed to be purple. So there are purple sections here with a lot of gold. But once it rehydrated, you can see here, it's more like spots. So it's not as purple as I would have anticipated, but it did hydrate fairly well, so it's nice and thick. So you do know for sure, like I said before, this is 100% wild craft, which means there was a man-made intervention. So the individual that was selling this is peddling false information about what they don't like uh, when it comes to sea moss, and this is, yeah, that's the best way to put it. They aren't truthful about what they're selling, or at least they don't know that they're not truthful. All right, so this here is the Condius Crypsis. So this one here is the one that a lot of folks are looking for that Dr. Sebi mentioned via name. And this is the one like you can only get in the coastal regions, uh, cold places like Maine or in Ireland. Um, yeah, this one's totally different texture-wise and everything. It's very different. Like you cannot, like making this, um, trying to make this, like tying it to a rope or anything is, is probably damn near impossible. Looking at the way this stuff is just done. Each piece is totally different. And this is what it looks like when it's dry. Yeah, like trying to put this on a rope would be insane. It's flat, it's really slippery, and even dried, everything about it is totally different. So this one here is the one I was most excited to get. This is Jamaican Wild Harvested. So this one here looks super stringy and I never saw sea moss like this online when I was doing my research. So I need to do some more research so I can find out more about this Jamaican Wild Harvested one. But just looking at it, it's super stringy and even when it's like fully hydrated, it's about, it's almost the, actually no, it is the exact same size as it's dehydrated itself, which is super interesting. So I'm super excited about this one because Super, super, super. Yeah, it just looks super awesome. Okay, so we have Chris gets here and she is gonna be taste testing all the sea moss and we're gonna be comparing it to the consistency of a semi-melted milkshake. And yeah, so she's there. And then King Kai, oh wow, you both are doing it. Boss, are you doing it? Yeah. You're wiggling? Mm -hmm. Yep, everybody is wiggling. All right. Okay, let's get to it. Let's get to it. <laughs> oh. You doing it too? All right. Okay, Crisquets. So if you would be so kind as to grab the spoon, take a sip of your, okay. Take a sip of your shake or like a little spoonful and then describe the consistency and that's gonna be okay. the base. You want to spill them? I don't have one. Um, thin. I'm sure everybody's had a melted milkshake before. Yes. So yes. So thin. it's a partially melted like milkshake. Milk. Oh, can you get a piece of like the thick part right there? It's still kind of together. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ice creamy. Okay, so we got <laughs> melted ice creamy. All right. So, please grab your first moss. All right, let's start right in the center. This is? Jamaican Harvested. All right, that's the wild no. harvested Jamaican moss. All right, Jamaican, me try this? <laughs> <laughs> nice, thanks, mate. Thanks for the support. You like it, too, girl? I mean, I am with me. Tastes like, I'm supposed to say what it tastes like, right? Yeah. Tastes like ocean water. Ocean water? Yeah, it's just like if you went okay. to the beach and swallow some water. 100% ocean water. Okay. Can you taste any of the lime that's in it? Go, okay. Each one had a fresh squeezed lime juice added. Good. Um, good. 
maybe. It's not like a strong scent, but okay. maybe good. a hint of it. Good. Eight, good. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, let's go with. That's going to be the Grenadian Purple. I don't have a joke for that one. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's more like the thicker milkshake. Yeah, baby, it's good. Um, I said it's like it. It's so weird. Look at him. This one you taste more of the lime. Okay. It doesn't really taste like the ocean. I don't know how to describe it. You ready to get down? All right, let's get down. Taking a break. One second. Okay, we're back. All right. Uh, so, oh. yes. So, mentally keep a note of what your favorite one is and your worst one was. All right? Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right, next one's going to be, ooh, Grenadian Gold. Wait, oh, the little one's purple. Okay. Oh, yeah. That was a lot more solid. Look how um, done his. Look his. Maybe like, a, like if you partially froze applesauce? Okay, partially frozen apple sauce. Yeah, it tastes mm, good. It's good. It's like good. It's so good. Pretty bland. Bland? Okay. All right. Next one is going to be uh, oh, the African purple. That's from Tanzania. Nice. Mm -hmm. Um, that was more like apple sauce. Like, like regular refrigerated apple sauce? Regular refrigerated apple sauce. Not like back of the fridge or front of the freezer apple sauce. Just regular regular apple sauce. Okay. Uh, I would say this is like a... Uh, thank you, Paris. I would say this is like a... Ocean metaphor. Okay. All right, what's next? Alright. That's gonna be the metal gold full spectrum. Oh, hold on, wait, can I have something for me, please? Thank you. I think he's checking you. He's checking you to make sure you're not having cavities. Probably. Uh, uh, that one's also like um, regular applesauce. Okay. Applesauce. Flavors, alright. Yeah. Next one is gonna be ooh, the Irish Condius Crypsis. Ooh, that's the rare one, the harvested one. It costs the money. That one's very thin. Yeah. Oh. That one's good. That one's um, good. Mild ocean taste. Okay. Yeah, very mild. All right, all right. Next one. All right, that's the fake fakes you lost the one. Oh, that's <laughs> uh, Jamaican crafted. All right, that's the wild crafted one. You did a lot of lime in this one. There's a lot of lime in that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we have the fake fake the one we uh, mm -hmm. used to previously take. That's the one from the international food market. That All way. right. Because this series, consistency is definitely straight water. Oh, God, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. It's bad. All right, so I guess that's your worst? Yeah, that's my least favorite. Okay, what's it taste like? Things you should put in your mouth. Okay, things you should not put in your mouth. Things kids don't understand. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay. All right, so which was your favorite? Like my favorite tasting? Yes. Did you know what your worst was? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel definitely like the this worst. was her favorite taste. That's what I'm going to say. Um, just because it's probably the easiest to actually ingest in larger quantities because it does, it's, it's got a very bland taste, but you can taste the lime in it. So nice, it's nice. Kind of these like lime applesauce. Okay. Um, Did any of them leave like a weird aftertaste? Yeah, them. Ah! Or a good aftertaste? Um... I may have thrown them too fast back to back and oh, notice any kind of aftertaste. So we need to do another taste testing later. Yes, we can do like a wine taste. Nice. Yeah, we can do like a wine. Nice. Wine infused sea moss. 
Figure the insurance out. Yeah, but no, we're gonna do that, but your mom thinks we'd be okay with that. Hello, folks. Ooh, good dancing there. Can I say something, boss? <laughs> You're adorable, my guy. Poppy. All right. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open these up and I can show you all the consistency here. Uh, Christine just did a consistency, taste consistency and flavor test, but I want you all to see as well what it looks like. So that's what we got going on here. Gold. Okay, so what we have here, we're gonna take them all out so you can see. So this is gonna be the Irish moss here. And as you can see here, this one is a little more liquidy. Uh, also can come down to my blender. I think my blender needs some work. I'm gonna do a video on that, comparing horizontal blenders and also standard bottom blenders. Because with the Irish moss and then also the Jamaican harvested moss, left a lot of particles to be desired in the moss itself. And then the African moss here, this one looks like that. So I'm just going pretty jelly. As Christine described it, I believe it was like apple saucy. And then this is our sea moss here. A little thicker. The Grenadian gold one. Now this one, this thing is thick. Straight thick. Now you can also increase the thickness of each one of these by just reducing the amount of water. So if you wanted a thicker one for these ones like this, just use less water, obviously. But since that one was so bushy, like I showed you, looked like lion's mane's mushroom, it automatically, just for that amount of water, was super thick. This is gonna be the Jamaican Wild Crafted. This one's gonna be the Grenadian Purple. Now this one's gonna be the Jamaican Wild Harvested. Again, this one didn't pan out as thick as I had hoped, but also as you can see, there's a lot of particles there. This definitely, I believe, comes from the blender. Horizontal blenders just don't allow gravity to do its thing. And then the last one here is gonna be the fake fake. Now this one's super watery. Um, of course, it could have been thicker if we had more sea moss in there, but since we were doing all this with the exact same weight across the board, can tell that it came out super watery and according to Christine when she tasted it, it tasted disgusting and I tried it as well and it was very gross, um, very gross in comparison. So if you've been using the fake sea moss uh, unknowingly, you may think that's just what sea moss tastes like but that's not the case at all. This one is garbage and it tastes like garbage but when you look at these other ones along the line here they have a much better taste and just looking at the consistency you can tell so like, here's, here's my thing when it comes to the consistency, right? If someone was using the fake sea moss to make a gel, they would use a lot more sea moss to make a gel. But would you really know? Unless you tried any of these other ones, you wouldn't know that this one was disgusting. And then if they did something where they mixed it with a lot more limes and other stuff to really mask the smell, the all taste, you wouldn't know. Yeah, like they all taste like the ocean, but this one has like a very, uh, to me it tastes chemically, like a little chemically taste. And then the rest of these just taste very oceanic. Oh, okay, so hopefully you learned something. I think I learned something. So let me just recap what I think I learned. When it comes to the farmed, like farm sea moss, like in a swimming pool or however they make it, that's not where it's at. It tastes disgusting, it's gross, and it is not beneficial for you because it does not actually have ocean minerals in it. Like I said, they make them in swimming pools or fish tanks, whatever it may be, and they use like a uh, artificial wave machine to get that movement going on, and then they add like table salt and some sea salt, you know, to it, but it, it's not really getting the minerals that it would actually get. So if you watched my previous video about sea moth lies debunked, which I'm gonna tag like up here somewhere, you'll see in there one of the things when I was looking at the 99 minerals that's in sea moss, 
was that a lot of these minerals are also the minerals that go along with what's found in like the ocean floor and the ocean water and stuff where it may be the seashells, you know, that just biodegraded, that gave back to the ocean, things of that nature that just, just happened. You won't get that with farm raised. Um, taste wise, taste chemically, so that's not where it's at. It seems like a great deal, especially when you're buying this stuff for the first time. I know that's what we did, and it's not where it's at once you get your hands on actual real sea moss. Um, the biggest thing I wanted to make sure was that I showed you all a bit of the consistency differences. And obviously we couldn't really describe taste to you or consistency, but what we wanted to do was give you an idea. So if you're buying sea moss gel from some of these companies, you know that they may not know what they're talking about. So start off with a small amount because some of these companies may just be buying it from the international food markets or the food markets in general, or that one guy I told you where I got the big box for a very good price and it was all fake sea moss. And they may not know, or they may know that it's fake, but they're telling you that it's X, Y, and Z, and you won't know the difference. Because honestly, how would you know if you haven't tested out all the other sea moths? Which is why we did this here. Um, the two ocean harvested sea moths, the Condius Crypsis, the Irish sea moths, and also the Jamaican wild harvested sea moths, both of those, the consistency was a little bit more liquidy but I believe that was the blender thing as well, because the blender, using a horizontal blade blender, never really works out that well with sea moss. I like to use a standard blender that blends from the bottom, but I didn't do so for this video. Just kind of dumb for me, I just totally forgot. So I'm gonna do a video comparing the different types of blenders so you all can see the best blender for sea moss. Um, when it comes to the like Etchema Contini variant that we have and the other variants from the Grenadian, the Jamaican Wildcrafted, and then the one we had from St. Lucia, it still blends up very well for horizontal blade, but it takes a lot longer. I believe gravity does a better job with the bottom blades, but we'll test it out in a later video. If you are interested in that, please let me know in the comments below. And also let me know what kind of blender you use because we have the Ninja Blender and just a standard bartending blender we got from a restaurant store. Um, but back to the sea moss, when it comes to it, the Etchema Contini, excuse me, the uh, Condish Crypsis, the Irish moss, and the Jamaican wild harvested moss, both of those have completely different textures from what you would usually find in stores and online. But they do cost more money, and they cost more money because it's rarer. And it's rarer simply because in order to obtain this, someone actually has to dive into the ocean to get it. So they can only come up with so much, and you also have to pay for the time, effort to get this stuff from down there and all this other stuff. So with keeping that in mind, that is one of the reasons why we decided to go with the mid-tier, which is the Etchema Contini that we had, and also the Grenadian one. It may not be Etchema Contini. I'm pretty sure it was looking at how the strands and stuff were, but we go with ocean um, crafted, which means that it did have individuals take some sea moss, break it off, tie it onto a rope in the ocean, and then grow it that way. And we chose that simply for sustainability because eventually what will happen is over harvesting happens. So in St. Lucia, where our sea moss is from, they used to have wild growing sea moss, but they harvested it so much that they ran out. It no longer grew back and there was just nothing else there. So what had to happen was they had to start using a man-made intervention to make it. So we're looking to prevent that because we give a lot of our sea moss away for free or at a very decent price if you want to buy more than the small. And we want to make sure we don't contribute to the over-harvesting of a species and it goes extinct that way. So that's why we're choosing that one. Um, I can't really say there was too much of a feeling of how the sea moss makes you feel. That's something you have to do through a long period of time, testing out for months and months and months to see if there's a difference in energy, keeping the same exact diet and sleep pattern and stuff like that. Now, honestly, I'm not gonna do that. I, I, I'm not. So I can't say if it makes you feel any better, but taste-wise, I can say that I preferred the Grenadian one, because that was a nice thicker one that really held onto the lime. I also liked ours, obviously. And the Etchema I mean, the uh, Condia Scripsis and the Jamaican Wild Harvested had different tastes as well. So, in conclusion, I hope you learned something. If you did, please comment below what you learned and let me know anything that I may have missed when it comes to this video, something you would like to see, because I'll just do a later video filling in that gap that I missed in this video. So again, thank you so much for watching the video. Please do me a solid favor, subscribe to the channel. 
like this video, and if you can, please go home and tell your mother and your grandfather that you love them both. Thank you so much. I'm Michael Nightwing, and I look forward to seeing you in the next Netter Gold video. Thank you. All right, I did a good job. Okay. Whew. That took a lot of effort. A lot of effort there. So much work. That took so much work.